I am very honoured to be interviewing Prakash Mani. He is a director of Axelon Intercept. So tell me about your journey in New Zealand to making a contribution that you are making now. Well, if, if you look at my 20 years in New Zealand, uh, I came and studied here. Uh, and then uh, I started my career with Fletcher Forest. I was very heavily involved in the, what you may remember, the Central North Island Forest Partnership. Yes, I remember that. Which, which was the Fletcher's and Chinese government. That's correct. Uh, so I was quite heavily involved in that project. And after that, I um, started a student consulting business. So for about good eight to 10 years, we help students to, to come and study in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. uh, and I started this business with a Taiwanese partner of mine. I realize you are from Taiwan. <laughs> um, and then uh, we, we sold that business uh, sort of about 1997, 1998. Mm -hmm. Since then I've been consulting. So I've done work for companies like AN New Zealand, uh, Fonterra, mm. Sky City, Ports of Auckland, companies, uh, very large companies. Primarily involved uh, a lot also in the negotiations mm -hmm. uh, with Asian countries. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of businesses, especially medium to large businesses who are either exporting or trying to penetrate the uh, Asian market. But and what's the magic that you bring, Prakash? Um, it's, it's quite interesting because uh, w when you travel in Asia and the because of my Eastern background, it's quite, I, I found it quite easy. Uh, because my values, my ethics of doing business were very similar to those of Asia. Uh, so I, I found um, that really helped. But you had to build mana, you had to build that uh, relationship over time. And, and that always is a difficult time. And I think uh, something that New Zealand companies can learn from experiences that I've had or you know, other NZIL members have had is that you need to build relationship before you can do business in Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and so it's, it's training the New Zealand uh, business owners that you know it's not a fly-by-night type of approach. You, you go in there with a long-term strategy. You know, what do they say? The Chinese plan you know, 20, 50 years ahead. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's planning long-term and saying, hey, I've chosen this market and I'm gonna work hard to build that. Mm. And, and, and that's, uh, I think, will take New Zealand companies quite far in the Chinese, Asian market in general. Mm. So just summarize for me, in a couple of key points, mm -hmm. the differences between the way that Bakia develop relationships and the way that Asians, I know it's a gross generalization, but right. develop relationships. Um, I, I think it's quite different. I mean, say, Western business uh, philosophy is quite different. It's, uh, the business approach is quite formal. It's built on credibility. Uh, it's built on your presence. Uh, you know wh what market you come from. If you are uh, from a Western Western uh, country established business, uh, you will probably get uh, that opportunity to negotiate much more easily with us. We do quite a lot of business with Australia, mm -hmm. and we find that. Uh, me being f of an Asian origin doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. it, it's very formal. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Asia, it's about trust. I think it's probably the biggest one that I've found. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when we were operating the student business, I had a parent give me 50,000 US dollars and said, can you please carry that for my son? Mm -hmm. No questions asked. And, and, and that happens because of trust. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's those things that are significantly different. Understood. Um, from an Eastern perspective. It's also about, um, I think, building long-term business relationships where everybody gains. Mm -hmm. um, I was uh, earlier, late last week at Grant Thornton uh, with the launch of that book on uh, yes. Chairman Now. That's right. Yeah, yeah. and very, very interesting. And, and when, you, when you read some of those interviews with the chairmen, you realize, you know, how, as, as an Eastern person of Asian origin, you do it quite naturally mm. because those are your values. Mm. The challenge for, I think, New Zealand businesses is to have people like us or just get assistance from people like us uh, uh, to, to go. Uh, and, and why is it a challenge, do you think, in, in for these New Zealand businesses to get advice to grow? <sighs> 
I, I think if, if you look at um, a lot of New Zealand businesses, they don't have a lot of Asian specific people in them. The banks are doing really well. Now they do appoint you know, Asian banking managers. And, but if you look at our multinational uh, businesses, very few people of asset origin on their boards mm -hmm. in the Sindia management team. Mm -hmm. uh, so you do, they don't get that level of expertise at, uh, at the decision making level. If you, if you say, and, and I think that's where the challenge is, is to look beyond, I mean, say, we, the next uh, century will be Asia. Uh, and we need to absorb, we, we, we need to present a picture of New Zealand companies as, as organisations that not only embrace Asia, that we really present ourselves as part of Asia. Mm -hmm. I was um, reading the statistics, uh, New Zealand, uh, data last night and by 2021 they forecast over 850,000 mm. people of Asian origin in New Zealand. Mm. Now that's significant. Mm. That it's one in four almost. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm. Uh, and that needs to reflect in our businesses so that when you are going into Asia and, and dealing with these global companies in Asia um, that you are presenting yourself as part of Asia. And I think that breaks a lot of barriers. Um, I, I found uh, when I was dealing and, and negotiating in Asia that it made a lot of difference to not only be sitting in front of Western people, but hey, this is a you know New Zealand company, but they have got Indian people, they've got Chinese people, and I think it 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 breaks a lot of barriers. Mm -hmm. You can discuss things that are more common than they aren't common. So building building that. Uh, that uh, persona, uh, I think, will have really help in Asia. Mm. And for our business, I mean, so we're penetrating the Asian market quite a bit at the moment. Uh, just this week, we have uh, been negotiating with a Chinese um, New Zealander to see if we can push into the Chinese market, which where we don't have any presence at all. Uh, but this year, we have uh, implemented in um, in the Middle East. Uh, we're currently negotiating at the final level in Vietnam. Uh, so there is opportunities uh, for New Zealand companies if we look long term and I think that's where we may be a little bit weak. Mm -hmm. So if you were going to give some advice in terms of strengthening New Zealand business success with Asia, what is the advice that you would give them? I think my advice to business owners is look at yourself as an Asian country, uh, as part of Asia, uh, absorb the the way Asians do business. Uh, be different, but embrace the common things. And, and in business, the fundamental things in common are your trust. Trust, uh, I think, in Asia is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Building that relationship, go there for the long term. Don't just think that you can uh, start doing business in a year. You know, invest in it long term because the paybacks um, is huge. Asian businesses generally look for a situation where there is a win-win. They don't just want, they want to make money, they want you to make money, and they want the relationship to endure. That's, uh, I think Western businesses do follow that. I think the, the challenge is they go into the Asian market without thinking these things. And, 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 and sometimes applying a Western philosophy of business into Asia may not work, in, in fact, in some cases it may backfire. Mm -hmm. So I think that will be probably my biggest advice mm -hmm. to New Zealand businesses. Mm -hmm. So in terms of your own vision for New Zealand, you're committed to this country? Absolutely, I've been here 20 years. Fantastic. So uh, and, and, and obviously you're going to continue to grow. You've, you've, you're a serial entrepreneur, aren't you? I, I think I am. A, yes, yeah. I have over the years, I have had uh, three, four businesses in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. um, we have sold, um, you know, just like any business where the opportunity arose. Mm -hmm. uh, but with Esalon Intercept, with now the SAP partnership, mm -hmm. I think it opens so many doors. Uh, one thing that we are doing, which is very exciting, um, we are building a early warning system for the petroleum industry. Uh, that, early uh, warning, what of peak oil? Commercially sensitive, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. But it is a early warning system that will be used in the petroleum industry that's not available and it's 
costing oil companies hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, we have built the technology, we are testing it at the moment. Uh, we're not looking for funding, but eventually we are looking for opportunities to, to start presenting this product in front of petroleum companies. Now, if that goes as well as it has gone so far, uh, we're looking at hundreds of millions in revenue, maybe over the next 10, 20 years, but just like any new technology, it will take time. But uh, New Zealand is probably the best place to, to develop these things. Uh, the, the support is there, technology New Zealand, uh, New Zealand grants are there, mm. so you can actually develop that and uh, there's something else that we are doing on the side um, as, 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 as expanding our, our focus rather than just focusing on SAP as, as a product. Mm. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Prakesh. I think it's been a most interesting and helpful interview. Thank you.